Now this is my Z80 Playground project, the single board computer that runs CPM. And ever since I started this project, it's always been my goal to make this into a standalone computer. So as it currently stands with just the Z80 Playground, you have to connect it up via USB from this socket here to your computer and look at what the Z80 Playground is doing in some sort of terminal emulator program such as TerraTerm. Uh, which means you've got to have it permanently tethered to your PC, which isn't exactly ideal. Now this is more like what I had in mind. Two boards, the top board is the Z80 Playground and the bottom board being some sort of video board. So I've just sort of mocked it up here with an empty PCB with nothing on it. But you would have an HDMI connector on this second board and a USB socket for a keyboard. So you'd be able to connect the two boards up together like this, stack them up together, hence the term 8-bit stack, and you'd end up with a computer that was standalone, completely standalone, plug it into a monitor, plug a keyboard in it, and you would be able to use this as a standalone computer. Now, it turns out that generating an HDMI signal is quite a difficult thing to do, and connecting up a USB mouse, not impossible, but... Um, it's not been the simplest thing to create a second board that would sit underneath and do that. So prompted by one of my viewers, Paul, I decided to go for something slightly simpler and get the job done in quite an easy way by buying something off of eBay that does most of what I want, if not all of what I want. So here we have a prototype of what I was trying to achieve, which is a standalone Z80 playground. This is the screen. It's a VGA monitor and down here we have a keyboard and if I type on the keyboard uh, what I type on the keyboard appears on the screen so let's have a little look around on CPM there we go perfect so that is what I'm trying to achieve and I've got it in prototype form the only thing I'm lacking from what I was trying to achieve is it has to be VGA and it has to be a keyboard with a PS2 connector on, as we'll see in a second. So let's have a look around and see what I've done then. So over here we have the Z80 Playground. So that's uh, a, pretty much a standard Z80 Playground, except for I have removed the CH340 module, which normally sits here, and replaced it with some direct connections for power, ground, transmit and receive. And over here, we have a VGA32 module. So VGA32 is a module that's easily, readily available off of eBay. You can pick them up for a few pounds. They've got a VGA connector on one end. They've got the antiquated PS2 keyboard and mouse connector on the other end. And they've got a few other bits and pieces on board that I'm not too interested in. A battery charger, a micro SD card socket. There's a Bluetooth aerial connector there, uh, a few other bits and pieces. Uh, there's an ESP32 processor. Uh, there's a disappointingly small number of general purpose IO pins available, and it runs at 3.3 volts. Now, the fact that it runs at 3.3 volts poses me with a little bit of a problem. So my monitor, handily enough, uh, is powered by 12 volts. So it's got this 12 volt power supply coming in here and the VGA connector going in there. So that's that means I've got to have 12 volts in my circuit, but as well as 12 volts, I've got to have um, 5 volts for the Z80 Playground and I've got to have 3.3 volts for the VGA32 module. So what I'm currently doing is I'm powering the whole thing from uh, here. This is my bench power supply, so that's got 5 volts coming out of it at 260 milliamps. Uh, the five volts is powering the Z80 playground and it's also via USB, via this USB connector here, which I, um, USB lead, which I chopped in half uh, and connected up here. It's sending five volts into the VGA32 module. The VGA32 module has got a 3.3 volt regulator on board so the 3.3 volts for the module is being generated by the module itself. So the only problem then that remains is how do you get a 5 volt board to talk to a 3.3 volt board? And that is where this central piece comes in. So what we're doing here is I've got a four channel um, level converter. I'm only using two of the channels actually. 
which converts from one voltage to another voltage. So the transmit and receive pins on the Z80 Playground have got to go to the corresponding receive and transmit pins on the VGA32. So the level converter takes the signal from the Z80 Playground. So let's say that would be the, what would that be? The transmit. So if the Z80 Playground wants to send a character to the screen, it sends it along this wire and that's going in serial at 460, 800 boards, so pretty fast. Comes down to here, gets converted from 5 volts down to 3.3 volts, sent to the VGA32, which understands that um, character and sends it off to the screen. And in the other direction, if you press a key on the keyboard, it comes in this keyboard connector here, uh, sent at 3.3 volts in serial over this wire, gets converted from 3.3 volts to 5 volts and sent to the receive pin on the Z80 playground. So the communication between the two boards is in serial, it's pretty simple, and uh, it just involves those two wires with a slight complication that one's at 5 volts and one's at 3.3 volts. Now, in terms of software, on the Z80 playground, obviously everything's just as normal. I'm running WordStar version 4 here. But you need some software on the VGA32 to tell it how to basically become a VGA display. So I'm running a library called FabGL on here, which is an open source library that creates a VT100 style console on the VGA display and takes uh, the keyboard input and the input from the Z80 Playground and displays it. So in order to do that, what I did was I got the Arduino IDE, I installed the software necessary for uh, ESP32, I installed the FabGL library, I had to update the driver on my Windows machine to understand this board. It was the Silicon Labs CP210X library, which is the driver that this board uses to, to talk over USB to your computer. So I had to update that or I couldn't program the board. I also had to make a slight modification to the FabGL library because it didn't understand the 460-800 board, uh, but that was pretty straightforward. I got the VGA32 terminal sketch that comes in FabGL I edited it a little bit so it knows about 460-800 board, uh, compiled the sketch, uploaded it to this board, and everything was pretty good actually. It was very, very straightforward. Now the VGA32 library, uh, when it's running, has uh, a configuration thing which you can get by pressing F12, which brings up this screen here. And I found that ANSI Legacy UK British were the options that I needed to choose to get my Z80 Playground running and the keyboard talking to it properly. The board rate's 460-800 as you can see, standard data and parity and stop bits etc. And I've got a resolution of 640 by 480 at 73 hertz, which isn't bad, 16 colours, and I'm getting 80 columns and 25 rows, so it's very nice. And as you can see, if I can get out of WordStar, here we are, CPM running absolutely perfectly. And so what I've got is effectively a standalone CPM computer, Z80 computer running CPM version 2.2, just like you could have bought in 1979. Now, the only thing is that this computer, as it currently stands with its wires hanging around everywhere and various different bits and pieces is not particularly user friendly so what i want to do is well i won't need this if i manage to get power from the 12 volt supply of the monitor but i want to put this uh this and do something with this to put it on a circuit board put it all inside a nice case with uh keyboard and the screen connectors poking out the back of it somehow and I'd like to get the reset switch external as well and maybe some of these LEDs and definitely you've got to be able to pull out your USB um, stick without opening up the box. So I want to make a nice case for it, possibly stand it underneath this monitor actually. So I've got the monitor on top of a case, be able to plug the keyboard in the front of it, have the keyboard sitting there in front of that and get myself a rather nice standalone computer. But I'll do that in the next video.